All right, today's lesson is on inequality for sides and angles of a triangle. Our first theorem is the external angle inequality theorem. Okay, so again, let's think about what these words mean. Exterior means outside. Angle, you know what an angle is, and inequality. Okay, what does the exterior angle inequality theorem say? If an angle is an exterior angle of a triangle, then its measure is greater than the measure of either of its corresponding remote interior angles. So you have to remember what is a remote interior angle. Let's look at a figure here. <clears throat> Okay, which is our exterior angle? One, two, three, or four. Which one is outside? Exterior means outside the triangle. It's going to be angle four. So this is our exterior angle. <clears throat> According to this theorem, its measure is greater than the measure of either of the remote interior angles. Well, which ones are the remote interior angles here? Out of angle one, two, and three, two of them are remote interior. Remember, remote means away from. So it's these two angles farthest away from our exterior angle. So angle two and angle one are our remote interior angles. And this theorem is saying angle four is greater than either one of these angles. So we could write an inequality, hence the name inequality theorem, saying the measure of angle four is bigger than the measure of angle one, <clears throat> and the measure of angle four is bigger than the measure of angle two. So we know those relationships there. Okay, our next theorem says if one side of a triangle is longer than another side, then the angle opposite the longer side <clears throat> has a greater measure than the angle opposite the shorter side. And there are lots of words, but again, if you'll take it one chunk at a time, like one little phrase at a time and picture that, then that's helpful. Drawings are definitely helpful. So let's look at this figure here. So here's a triangle. According to this theorem, if one side is longer than another side, so here's our long side, nine is longer than four, then that means the angle opposite the longer side, opposite again, meaning you're going all the way across the triangle. This angle is going to be bigger than the angle opposite your smaller side. Okay, think of a pair of scissors. If you have a pair of scissors closed, I know I'm not an artist, <clears throat> okay, this angle is small, and so this gap here between the blades of your scissors is smaller. But if you open it up so that this angle gets bigger, well, what happens to the gap between the blades of your scissors, it gets wider, it gets longer, and it's like a triangle. So same thing here. As we open up the angles, the side opposite gets longer. So the longer, or I'm sorry, the larger angle is going to have the longer side associated with it. And then the opposite statement is true as well. If one angle of a triangle has a greater measure than the other angle, then the side opposite that greater angle is longer. So in other words, the longer side is going to have the bigger angle, the bigger angle is going to have the longer side. Okay, same situation. We're just saying it backwards. If 100 is bigger than 30, then the side opposite the 100 is going to be bigger than the side opposite the 30. And that shows to be true on our picture. So let's do some problems here. Determine which angle has the greatest measure. 
Okay, well, <clears throat> we know that angle one is bigger than angle four or angle three because it's the exterior angle. Four and five are congruent to each other because they're both 90 degrees. And angle one is obtuse, whereas angle two is acute. So angle one is bigger than angle two as well. So the one with the greatest measure has to be angle one. It's bigger than all of these others. So just take them one at a time and see how they're related. But you had to remember that an exterior angle is greater than either one of these remote interior angles. Use the exterior angle inequality theorem to list all of those angles whose measures are less than angle four. Okay, so here's angle four. Okay, well three has to be less because it's acute. Two and five have to be less because they're remote interior, so we're gonna put them in numerical order. <clears throat> Okay, so we were looking here at this triangle, four being an exterior angle, and two and five being the remote interior angles. Now we're gonna look at this bigger triangle. Four is the exterior angle. Eight and seven <clears throat> are remote interior, so it has to be bigger than seven and eight also. Six is acute, and six is smaller than five. Five is smaller than four, then six has to be smaller than four also. Now we don't know the relationship between four and one or nine, because these are exterior angles, so we don't really know what kind of relationship they have. <clears throat> so the correct answer would be D. Determine the relationship between the measures of angle RSU, right here, and SUR. Okay, when they say relationship, are they equal or is there an inequality? And if there's an inequality, which one is bigger than the other? So in order to determine that, we're going to look at our side lengths and go to the opposite angles. So I'll start with the smaller side is 3.6. The angle opposite that is R. So this is gonna be my smallest. We'll call that angle one. <clears throat> 5.2 is my middle side. So I go all the way across the triangle. So angle U is my second smallest. It's right in the middle. And then my longest side here, 5.3, I go opposite. So angle S here is my biggest. So they're asking us to find the relationship between RSU and SUR. So RSU is greater than angle SUR is how you would write that relationship. It is an inequality. And we know that because the sides are not equal. Almost, but not. Determine the relationship between the measures of A, B, D. So we need to mark that. A, B, D. This one right here. And D, A, B. <clears throat> are they equal? Well, let's look at the sides opposite. Opposite of angle... ABD is 5.4. Opposite of angle DAB here is 5.3. So you could either say ABD is greater than DAB, or you could say DAB is less than ADB. I usually write it the way in the same order that it's in the problem. So A, B, D, because its opposite side is 5.4, which is bigger than the opposite side of D, A, B. I need to say it's greater than angle D, A, B. 
Okay, <clears throat> so we are going to choose C. Ebony is following directions for folding a handkerchief to make a bandana for her hair. After she folds the handkerchief in half, the directions tell her to tie the two smaller angles of the triangle under her hair. If she folds the handkerchief with the dimensions shown, which two ends should she tie? So what are the two smaller angles? X, Y, Z. Which two are smaller? Well, here's my two smaller sides. I need to choose the angles opposite those smaller sides. So my angles would be Y and Z. Remember, you're going all the way across the triangle, choosing the opposite. Tanya is following directions for making a kite. She has two congruent triangular pieces of fabric that need to be sewn together along their longest side. The directions say to begin sewing the two pieces of fabric together at their smallest angles. At which two angles should she begin? Okay, well, we know that these are our two longer sides. So they're going to match up. Am I going to start here with C and E? Or am I going to start here with A and D? Well, again, we need to go across the triangle and see which one has the smaller side associated with it. <clears throat> C has 1.75 associated with it. A has 1.5 associated with it. Which one's smaller? 1.5 is smaller, so which angle is smaller? It would be A, and its corresponding angle is D. So we're going to say A and D, choice A. So there are a few examples on how to use these relationships to answer some real-life questions.